Hey, what's up, guys? So I just wanted to give you a couple examples. Your task as you read is to notice three to five different characters' motivations. What makes them do what they do? And you're going to use these in your character web. Okay, so when I'm like reading, I think it's important to notice people's motivations. Why do people want to do what they do? So just, oh, by the way, there's an audiobook. Um, if you do this and actively learn, I put one right in there. Um, hopefully it sinks. If it doesn't, hopefully you'll let me know. Um, so I'm just going to jump down to a note I made about Reverend Paris a little later. Um, to this one, right? Paris like enters the scene. He's weeping because his daughter Betty is sick, right? And Abigail, his niece is there. And Abigail is one of the most important people in the play, right? But you come up to this line. Now look, you child. Your punishment will come out in its time, but if you trafficked with spirits in the forest, I must know it now, for surely my enemies will, and they will ruin me with it. But we never conjured spirits. Then why can't she, can she not move herself since midnight? This child is desperate. It must come out. My enemies will bring it out. Let me know what you have done here. Abigail, do you understand that I have many enemies? I have heard of it, uncle, but there is a faction that is sworn to drive me from my pulpit. Do you understand that? I think so, sir. Now then, in the midst of such disruption, my own household is discovered to be at the very center of some obscene practice. Abominations were done in the forest, right? So look here. Notice he mentions his enemies just as much as he mentions his daughter. It's almost like he's using his daughter's sickness to guilt Abigail into helping him because he has enemies that are going to hurt him. So he has more than his daughter on his mind, right? You don't like use your daughter to justify people attacking you if you really care about your daughter. He's motivated here by fear of his enemies and how they'll use his daughter's affliction against him because, and this is like part of being a reader, I'm taking that background knowledge I have from the last from the essays I read, where it talks about Paris having enemies. Then when we go down further, I think I made a note here. Yeah, now we go down further to the section about Mr. Putnam, where he walks in and at the moment, he's intent upon getting Paris for whom he has only contempt to move toward the abyss. Oh, he's one of his enemies, right? So that comes back up. And that's another important thing to know like about books that are worth reading they'll bring things up like whether explicitly really directly or a little more subtly but they'll bring up important things so putnam does not like paris you scroll down further much further but it comes out when proctor and a bunch of other people are like talking right proctor comes in giles comes in and they start arguing with um with putnam and with Paris about the money, right? Proctor and Giles are like yelling at Paris about taking like too much stuff. Like, why do you got to own, why do you want the deed to your house, man? What's wrong with you? We've never had anyone ask. And then like he, Pro, uh, Proctor finally says like, yeah, screw you, Paris. Like if there's a revolt around you, where do I sign up? That's why he says, why? Then I must find it and join it. Right, right after Paris says, there's a party in this church and a faction against me. Notice here how Putnam takes Paris' side against Proctor, though. So there's, there's some, like, the enemy of my enemy is my friend a bit going here. But this argument isn't about money. It's about the townspeople thinking Paris is awful and greedy, and that's what motivates them to threaten rebellion. So notice here the plots against each other and the counterplots and the absolute hatred in the tone here. There's one last instance of motivation that I really like you got to see, because if you miss it, you miss it. Right. There's this part where after. Hang on. Where Abigail is like, she's getting a little flirty, right? A little closer with a confidential wicked air. We were dancing in the woods last night. My uncle leaped in on us. He took fright is all. Proctor, his smile widening because like he's picturing the girls dancing in the woods. Ah, oh, you're wicked yet, aren't you? A thrill of expectant laughter escapes her, and she dares come closer, feverishly looking into his eyes. You'll be clapped in the stocks before you're 20. This is Proctor getting flirty, right? And he is married. But then we go down a little further. 
Abigail, I, they talk a little bit more. I know how you clutched my back behind your house and sweated like a stallion whenever I come near. So a stallion is a male horse. Like, what association do you think she's talking about that and back clutching and sweat? Or did I dream that? It's she put me out. You cannot pretend it were you. I saw your face when she put me out. You loved me then and you do now. Abby, that's a wild thing to say. A wild thing may say wild things, but not so wild, I think. I've seen you since she put me out. I've seen you nights, right? So she's saying, like, you come to my window at nights. Now over here, Proctor gently pressing her from him with great sympathy, but firmly. So he's, like, trying to say, like, no, but he really wants to, like, be together. Because maybe something about like what she's saying about his wife is true, but he doesn't want to like sin again, right? These two clearly have a history. And then you think back to like Abigail hating on Mrs. Proctor for blackening her name, calling her soiled, right? That's like 17th century for thought, like that person over there, right? So her motivation here is pretty clear. Right. She wants to get with Proctor and she believes that Abigail, that Elizabeth, Proctor's wife, is the person stopping that from happening. Then you think like back to earlier when she says, if you tell anyone I drank blood to try to kill Goody Proctor, I will stab you in your face. I will bring a pointy reckoning. Right. So you start to see Abigail's motivation here. So like those are the kinds of things that you should be picking up on as you read. OK, you, there are other ones. But like, just know that's the kind of annotations that I expect you to leave. You can leave something like Proctor getting flirty, right? Your annotations don't have to be long, but they do have to identify character motivation. Cool. Thanks, guys. Good luck.